Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and this is the electrical question of the day. All equipment grounding conductors in an outlet box must be bonded together even if they are from separate circuits. Is this true or false, and what code reference do we need to go to? Well, the answer to this one is actually true based off of 250.148. And I'm going to be honest with you, this is one that early in my career I got wrong as an installer, and I'll explain why. First, let me set the stage. Let's imagine that we have a four-gang switch box. And let's say I wanted to bring two circuits to that box. One for on the left-hand side of the box for some outdoor exterior security lights, and I wanted it to be on its own circuit. And then the other three switches will say they're for some interior lighting on another circuit. When I was first in the game, AFCIs were just being pushed and they were tripping. It was a big problem. So in my mind, I thought that perhaps if I bonded all those grounds together, that I might have some tripping issues. And I believe it's still a common misnomer out in the field. But we have to look back to what an equipment grounding conductor actually is. An equipment grounding conductor is a normally non-current carrying conductor, right? So it's never going to trip a breaker unless there's a fault, unless there's a reason for it to trip the breaker. So it's not going to interfere with any AFCI function. It's not going to interfere with any GFCI function like bonding a bunch of neutrals from two different circuits would. Now let's go to the code language. I've paraphrased here in the 2023 NEC, but it's the same in previous versions. You need to consult the NEC for the actual code language. When circuit conductors are spliced or terminated within a box or on equipment within that box or supported by a box, all associated wire type equipment grounding conductors must be connected together within the box. What it's stating here is that if you're splicing inside of that box or if that equipment grounding conductor is going to a piece of equipment or the box itself, you're going to need to bond all of those together even if they're from multiple circuits. So in our scenario of the four gang switch box, I should have bonded all of those grounds together and then made my appropriate pigtails jumping off and going to each device as necessary. I think this is a big one that gets missed all the time, and hopefully this brought a little bit of clarification. There are some other rules there in 250.148 that I highly recommend checking out. It's like a 30-second read, but there's a lot of meat there. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and before we jump off today, I want to show you where we're getting these questions from so you can get plugged in too. If you head over here to our website, hopefully you guys can see that. You sure can. All right, if you head over here to YouTube and you click on my face or you click on Electrical Code Coach, or if you're on your phone, just click on my face, then you want to come down here and you want to scroll all the way over to Community. That's the Community tab. That's where we get together six days a week at 4 a.m., and I will drop a code question, and you can go on there and answer it. Oh, let me get that back. If you scroll down here, on a lot of the days, I'll have the code question, you answer it, then after you answer it and find out which one is the correct answer, you can have a video explanation hey, of everyone, that specific back. question, just like the video that you're watching now. So not only will keep you fresh in the code and sharp, but it will also give you a detailed video explanation of how we got there. Because every day that we get in the code book, we're shrinking it just a little bit. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and my bargain is that these videos will add value to you, and you will in turn go out add value to others. If you need anything from me, you can always email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.